Alan, in all the sciences today, information is a fundamental new way of thinking. Uh, Claude Shannon and, and technically describing information has uh, really revolutionized all of science. Some people even say information is the, the ultimate reality mm -hmm. underlying everything. Uh, I'd like to look at the biological sciences and how information works. Now, some people talk about information in a very technical sense in molecular biology because there is a very close combination. But as a philosopher, I'd like to look broadly. What is the nature of information? What are the categories, the big ways of thinking about information in biology? If we, if we look at biology as a, a, a total landscape of information, how do we categorize it? It's a good question. I would probably concentrate on a key distinction between information as covariation and information as sort of semantic content. Information as semantic content is the everyday use that we oftentimes find ourselves appealing to when we say this has information about <laughs> that. It's the aboutness that is that semantic key. However, the notion of information as covariation is more connected to information theory the developed by Shannon and others in the 20th century. And there, the important thing is reliable covariation of features that allow prediction. And it does not mean that you have semantic about content. So when in the biological sciences people talk about information, they sometimes slide back and forth between right. these two, but they need to be importantly kept separate. The technical sort of apparatus of information theory is associated with that one notion and much of our everyday notion, but also uh, technical notions as well related to semantics are a different idea. Right. So let's talk about each and start with the uh, covariation. Which of the categories of, biolog of bi biological sciences lend itself uh, to information in the, in the technical covariation sense. So I think there, the place uh, probably the most significant would be systems biology, uh, where people are trying to do uh, large data analyses of, say, a cell, and they're trying to under, they've measured a bunch of properties, and then they're looking for uh, ways in which the properties of one are predictive of the properties of other at a later time point. And so then you can talk about information content because you can actually quantify mm -hmm. over those reliable connections in the system with a gigantic data mm -hmm. set. Um, so anywhere where you have that capacity to measure large quantities of variables, I think is definitely a place where you would um, uh, see that kind of analysis at the forefront often of the modeling. And, and in that area, um, error bars are very important. You know, mm -hmm. what you may have some correlation, but what are the error bars around it? Um, I, I think is, is a critical factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so noise is actually going to be one of the key categories that will need to also be attended to. You have information and you have noise, and noise then is going to be something that relates to the error in measurement and also to the natural stochasticity of the system. The system could just be noisy, and we need to recognize that. And there's a potential uh, extension of that too, that in some systems, this theory, I know in, in, the, uh, in the neurosciences it's the case, and it may be in evolution, that noise is, is not just a, a bug of the system, but it's a feature of the yep, system absolutely. where you couldn't do it without the noise. It wouldn't work without the noise. Yes. Which is, right. I, I believe, a really fundamental contribution of information theory right. uh, to and understand. I and I think that is also a counterintuitive thing because when people think about information in biological systems, if you were to say, well, it's actually not just the information, but it's the noise that makes a difference, I think a lot of folks would have trouble conceptualizing, what do you mean that's important? Right. But all kinds of key decisions in living systems, such as when does a cell uh, uh, get uh, its fate specified, actually can be connected with natural noisiness 
and stochasticity in these systems, and we better understand that now than we did even several decades ago. Right, and, and that's a really deep insight that information would give you that is counterintuitive, as you say, yep. that it's the, in the noise in the system enables it to work as well as it does. Absolutely, yeah, an advance. Uh, on the other side, on, on semantic information, uh, that, that really says every, every, everything is in that category. But are there big uh, chunks of that that you can kind of, as a philosopher, uh, 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 disaggregate and look at, look at different large sections? So I would, I, yeah, I would say an uh, area where the semantic notion is very important for the scientific work is in animal communication. So trying to understand how do signals that animals give convey information about situations. Oh. So a warning signal, right? Um, to the degree to which one member of a group of rodents makes a call to alert them to a avian predator nearby, um, does that signal need to communicate only danger? Does it need to communicate aerial danger? Does it need to communicate aerial danger of a particular kind? So a lot of the studies in animal communication uh, are interested in studying what we might think of as the grain of the semantics. How mm. much semantic content is there? Because clearly that signal is a signal, right? It's a signal about something. It's not just a uh, a vocalization. And, and you see that across oh, virtually every species has something like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a that's kind of a category of information that you can use cross species wise. Could potentially. I mean, I think that the that'd the, be different, of course. Yeah, and I and I think that's part of the challenge is understanding when your analysis of a particular system will generalize, and that's an interesting philosophical question that. Uh, some of these semantic approaches to information face that the um, uh, covariation approaches to information would be less confronted with because that notion is more exportable. Does the concept of semantic information at all contribute to a greater understanding, or is that just a kind of a technical way of saying what you said, what you were doing anyway? <laughs> that is a controversial point. <laughs> it's not clear, and many people would. Uh, argue that the use of semantic information uh, is problematic in areas of biology and actually leads to inferences that are inappropriate or inflated in certain ways. Uh, so the discourse of information, I would think, is a mixed alloy. It's not mm. all good, it's not all bad. And I think that in the uh, last few decades, what has come out, especially in philosophical analysis, is there are times when information language is used and causal language would actually do just fine and be more precise. Mm -hmm. And there are other contexts where the information language might be necessary, but the slipperiness between those two can lead people astray. And if we don't pay close attention to the right use in the right context, or even whether to use it at all, we really could get ourselves into uh, some troublesome areas. So there's reason to pay attention. Do you see though that information in biology is, is becoming, because I, it seems to me to be coming more prevalent in terms of ways of thinking. Is that just a, a, a pseudo effort to, you know, physics envy to look more like physics or is there real substance? I think the information discourse might be more prevalent. Whether or not it's all substantive is another question because some of that is used for other purposes such as securing grant funding and <laughs> things like that. I would say that uh, we're still probably at a place where we don't quite know the full scope of the significance of the application of information concepts in biology.